14, Bob Steele and Gina Martin on First News with you this morning. And joining us on the live line from the Little Rock Air Force Base, the wing commander of the 189th Airlift Wing, Colonel Steve Eggensperger. Good morning, Colonel. Hey, good morning, Bob. It's great to be with you today to talk about the Arkansas Air National Guard. Well, we appreciate the National Guard and all that you do, and I think all of us who've paid any attention at all know the National Guard has been actively involved in the defense of our country for a long time now. Well, we're a bit troubled by what we hear, uh, the fact that you've have had to ground your four-plane fleet of the upgraded C-130 amps, uh, and they're just sitting on, I guess, the tarmac or in the hangars. Uh, why did you have to do that? Well, we've got uh, four of these modified airplanes out on the ramp. We've been involved in the uh, avionics modernization program for about 10 years now. Uh, but in last week, we were supposed to start the final phase of testing, uh, referred to as the uh, uh, initial operational test and evaluation, where we were going to take these airplanes out, and the trained crews and maintainers were going to put them through the paces to make sure that they could do what, everything they were supposed to be able to do. But the Air Force made a decision last week to indefinitely postpone this testing. And so the guidance we received is to maintain these airplanes in flyable storage and not to fly them anymore until the decision is made on the fate of the avionics modernization program. Now, the Little Rock Air Force Base has played a huge role in the development of this aircraft, have they not? Absolutely. The 189th uh, Airlift Wing has been uh, the lead wing in this uh, for about 10 years. We've, we've done a lot of, uh, a lot of work preparing for this. How don't you have a $22 million trainer for this aircraft? Is it sitting idle as well? We do. We have a full motion simulator that's out here. Uh, it is not idle. Um, we are using that to keep some of the crews uh, current and qualified while we're not flying the airplane. I see. How troubling is this to you after all of this? Well, the, the bottom line is um, the, the fiscal realities uh, of the budget are just what they are, and, and uh, I understand these decisions are being made. Um, Little Rock is still the C-130 center of excellence, so we are still going to provide training whether or not the airplanes are modified. Little Rock Air Force Base is still going to provide combat airlift around the globe to uh, provide beans and bullets to those soldiers, sailors, airmen, airmen and marines that are in harm's way, so that's not going to change. Uh, the airplanes may be modified, or they may, they may not, but a lot of things remain the same. How many in the fleet of aircraft that you maintain are, have not been modified yet? Well, there was 221 airplanes that were supposed to be modified uh, up to the C-130 amp standard. Uh, right now, there's only four airplanes that are, are have been modified, and there's one more uh, amped airplane that is supposed to be delivered at the end of February. Now, the amped aircraft, as I understand it, was really a cost saving measure because when you roll out a C-130J, it's about 63 million bucks and it only cost, uh, and I say only, uh, but, but it only cost about $15.4 million to equip current airframes with AMP. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, it, it does save money uh, over when you compare it to purchasing a new J model. Uh, these are still 1980 model airplanes, um, and but it, it brings these airplanes up to the latest technology as far as the cockpit and communication and navigation equipment, uh, and it allows them to fly in European airspace, which current C-130s cannot do due to the stringent uh, communication and navigation requirements. Is it true that this program up until now has never been fully suspended? That's true. It's never been fully suspended. There has, has been rumors uh, it, at, at times, and there was two years ago, uh, there was consideration of canceling the program, but this is the first time that the, the program has officially been suspended. Now, you've got four AMP aircraft. Are you going to have qualified crews to fly them regardless uh, if no more are coming your way? Well, we trained up eight crews and about 100 maintainers to fly and work on these airplanes. Uh, the guidance we've been given is to maintain two crews current and qualified uh, until, the, until a uh, final decision is made. And when will that be, Colonel? Well, I hope it'll be within uh, the next few weeks. We're anticipating the president's budget uh, coming out around the first part of February, and hopefully we'll be given some guidance as to where we go from here. Is, right. it, is it frustrating to have these uh, new planes out there and not be able to fly them? Well, it's kind of like having a new car parked in your driveway and your dad won't <laughs> give you the keys. <laughs> so I guess the answer to that is yes. Colonel Steve Eggensperger, sir, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate the update. Hey, I appreciate being with you. Let me just say one more thing. The Air National Guard is still the 
best part-time job in America, and we're offering signing bonuses of up to $20,000 to new recruits. Is there an age requirement on that, Colonel? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, there is. And Bob, you're probably a, a little, maximum little age bit too requirement old. is what he's trying to ask. Uh, it shucks. Uh, I love the Air Force, and I, I'm just sad that I can't come out there. <laughs>